Hi, I'm Marion McDonald. I'm here to enter the great debate. Interoperative Klansgram or no interoperative Klansgram or selective. And I'm here to say selective is the way to go. It's the norm, it's what we do, and it works. I have no disclosures. When we look at selective Klansgram, I think we need to look at what impact interoperative Klansgram really has on our practice and our clinical outcomes. And what is practice reality? What is going on out in the community surgeon? And does it affect what they do when they do a cholangiogram or when they don't? Well, we all know the indications for intraoperative cholangiograms. Elevated LFTs, maybe your total bilirubin is equivocal, 1.9, 2.1. Your ultrasound may show possible common bile duct stones, or if you're like everybody else in the ER, you show you get a CAT scan and it shows a dilated common bile duct or maybe aberrant anatomy. But these are usually seen preoperatively and they usually deal with them preoperatively. They don't suddenly appear in the operating room. These are th reasons to do a cholangiogram, but I would propose that most of the time we deal with this as a preoperative issue. Other indications for cholangiogram, aberrant anatomy. Maybe there's some extra tubular structures in your critical view, or you're doing it as a teaching experience. You see a large common bile duct and you might have a suspicion for stones. But again, these are not common in the everyday use. And I would propose to you that unclear anatomy or difficult anatomy may actually be a contraindication to a cholangiogram. Is a short cystic duct, which is a named indication for a cholangiogram, really all that easy to perform a cholangiogram? You might actually be discouraged if you spend a great deal of time achieving a good critical view, you're able to get around that duct, you see where you are, but your duct is very short or inflamed. This may actually discourage you from doing an intraoperative cholangiogram, and thereby you're being selective. You're using good clinical judgment to determine that maybe it's not a good spot to do that cholangiogram. So unclear anatomy isn't a, a, an absolute indication. It's a place where you use your judgment to determine if it's safe to do a cholangiogram. Common bile duct stones intraoperatively, another reason we do cholangiograms. What are you gonna do about those? You're gonna call your stone busters the vast majority of time. You're gonna call your GI guy to do an ERCP or your interventional radiologist. The average general surgeon graduating from a residency has very limited experience with a cholidocoscope or a fluoroscopic guided techniques. And frankly, do you really want them doing a common bile duct exploration or a cholidoscopy if they hardly ever have done one, maybe one or two in their residencies or none at all in the last five years in their practice? We know from many studies that volume equals experience, which in most cases equal improved outcomes. If you're not used to doing a common bile duct, it may be time to relegate that to the hands of a specialty surgeon and not do anything about those stones intraoperatively. Does IOC really help you reduce bile duct injury? Well, it's all how you look at the data. Well, intuitively, it might help you mitigate worsening an injury, and I'm a big proponent of interoperative clangram. There's really no robust level one evidence to say that you can reduce the, the incidence of bile duct injury. And when you could when you when you control for co-founders with instrumental variable analysis, as in the Sheffield study in 2013, there is no statistically significant association between IOC and common bile duct injuries. It's not effective as a preventative strategy during cholecystectomy. And when you look at Donilon's study in 2021, the important thing to note is that bile duct injury and readmission rates are not statistically significantly reduced when comparing cholecystectomy with and without IOC. And for the sake of time in this discussion, I've included that reference at the end of this talk, and I encourage you to read the discussion with this uh, very excellent analysis. There are also other tools in our toolbox, and I won't go into them because we have some excellent uh, panel discussions later on, but ICG is now available laparoscopically. It's not just for robotic surgery. And some studies have shown that preoperative MRCP without intraoperative clangiogram is a very effective and safe strategy in the treatment of gallstones. So again, we're going to hear about this later, but there are other tools in our toolbox. Critical view, if you have a critical view like this, a superb critical view and a great dissection, are you really gonna to need to do an intraoperative cholangiogram? I would propose that most of us would not do a cholangiogram in this scenario for time, effort, and the fact that you have such a great view. You're using your clinical judgment. You're selecting when to do that cholangiogram. 
we did a study, a local study of about 10 different hospitals encompassing about 40 different surgeons, most of which were general surgeons who do acute care call or acute care surgery. And the reality is that the vast majority, 89% of surgeons did selective cholangiography or not at all, but the vast majority did selective cholangiography. About 11% of, of surgeons did this all the time or almost all the time, but they were in the vast minority. So the reality is it's the norm. So what do we do with this information? Well, let's look at why they chose a selective approach. Well, for the vast majority of them, they felt that pre-op labs or ultrasound studies did not indicate a need for this. They felt that they didn't need to perform a cholangiogram intraoperatively or that their critical view was safe and they felt that they did not have a barren anatomy. So what this tells us is that surgeons prefer to use their judgment when deciding whether to do an intraoperative cholangiogram. And for the most part, that works pretty well. So how do we move the needle forward? Again, I'm a big proponent of intraoperative cholangiogram, but the reality is selective is the way we do it. So let's acknowledge that, that the majority of surgeons use selective cholangiogram, and IOC is one of the many tools in their toolbox. One thing we can do is increase the use and availability of fluoroscopy. If you're always working with your orthopedic surgeon and juggling who gets the fluoroscopy, you're not likely to go and do a cholangiogram if the fluoroscopy is not readily available. We could encourage IOC for self-improvement and for teaching. We know the safe cholecystectomy didactic modules encourage us to use uh, cholangiography. The ADOPT course, then I'm sure there's going to be an ADOPT course in our Denver meeting in 2022. I encourage you to take that course. It'll help you deal with how to deal with the results of your intraoperative cholangiogram, how to read the cholangiogram effectively, and perhaps how to deal with those common bile duct stones. But if you don't know how to do it, if you've not had a lot of experience in your residency or even in your clinical practice, you're going to fall away from that. So keep in practice, use the intraoperative cholangiogram liberally, but realize that selective judgment is also important. Selectivity is the way to go. Your clinical judgment is good and it's safe and selective is the way we do it. Thank you for allowing me to participate in this discussion and I look forward to the great debate.